My name is Mehdi Sadardar and I'm an electrical engineer. Same time, I'm a YouTuber. I always loved electronics since the first time I grabbed a 220 volt AC back in Iran. Here it's 110. I was like around six years old. I grabbed a 220 volts and it was like someone just punched me hard in the chest. It was awesome. And also I am a very introvert person. So I'm not used at like, actually this is the first time I'm talking in front of a live audience right now, and I'm sweating like crazy, which makes me highly conductive. <laughs> and it's never a good thing for an electrical engineer. And I made my first video, I got an electrostatic discharge gun, and I thought, hey, that's a good thing to show people how these things work. Here's a 25 kilovolt discharge to a grounded box. <laughs> <laughs> I try to show people my knowledge, my experience, to show how to use electrical things. But I leave the mishaps in because it seems like people like to see other people get hurt. <laughs> and so, yeah, and it actually teaches people how to handle things, right? Like, if they actually see me getting hurt, it will scare them not to do the same thing. Let's move on to the subject of my presentation. Well, first of all, there are 10 car batteries here, okay? Don't try what I do at home. I wanna cover three of my favorite subjects. One of them is that can be actually weld with car batteries. The other one is that which one kills a person? Is it the voltage or the current? Also, I wanna show the difference between AC and DC. Do they hurt the same at the same level? Let's start with car batteries. I have 10 car batteries here, all of them lead acid, capable of over 200 amps. A regular car battery voltage is around 12 volt. When it's charged, it's somewhere around 12 and a half to 13 volt. And it can provide up to 500 amps, like even the small ones, they can do like 530 amps of current. When uh, That's how much current your car needs when cranking the engine. It takes a lot of current, a lot of power to turn the engine. Let's move on with the, uh, I'll just move this first battery. So the first thing is that how much is the exact voltage of the battery? I had my multimeter here. The voltage of this one is 12.6 volts. So it's a charged battery. This battery can go up to 500 amps. Do you think this will hurt me? Any ideas? It will hurt me? Okay, here we go. Touch it. Nothing. And the reason is that the voltage is equal to resistance times current. It's 12, vo 12 volts. The battery can do 500 amps, but my body resistance is somewhere around 100 kilo ohms depending on a lot of conditions, like for example, the hydration level of my body, the skin condition, if it's wet or not. All these conditions basically lower the resistance of the body, which allows more current. But in normal conditions, I have around 100 kilo ohm of resistance. The voltage is fixed at 12 volts, and that gives me a current, which is 120 micro amps running through my body. So this is not gonna hurt me. Can I weld with one car battery? Take one of these and a steel rod. It makes sparks. It's probably running the 200 to 500 amp, but it's not enough for welding. Not good enough. Let's, oops, don't show the battery. <laughs> Using two batteries, same things. How much is the exact? voltage, let me put two of them in series, or any supply basically. When I put them in series, the voltages add up. So I have 212 volt, which is nominal voltage, so it should be 24 volt or above. I just measure it quickly. It's 25 volts, around 25 volts. The current of the two batteries remains around the same as one single battery, but the voltage doubles. Now, does it hurt? This is 24 volts. You think it hurts? Touch it? Yeah, of course. See, nothing. 25 volt, still the resistance of my body blocks most of the current, so I don't even feel it. The electricity can hurt if the voltage is high enough to create high enough current. So if I raise this voltage a lot, then I'll have enough current to actually hurt myself. If the skin is somehow much more conductive, then I'll feel it and it'll hurt me. It can actually kill if the current is high enough due to the high enough voltage and low enough resistance and the current runs through your vital organs. It needs to go through heart or brain and interfere with their function. Also, another thing is that 
the body needs to be exposed to high voltage for a long enough time. So, for example, if it is 100 kilovolt, but if it's there for one nanosecond, very small period of time, it'll hurt me badly, but it's not going to kill me. But if that time goes to one millisecond, it'll kill me right away. If it's one second, it'll just cook me too. The question is that now, can this voltage weld? <sighs> Don't short the battery. These clamps are not really good to hold the electrode, but fine. I'll use them. Jeez, I'm destroying something else now. Huh, seems like I actually destroyed something there. Ah, there you go. <laughs> okay, don't look directly, okay? I'll try to. Hey, I can actually weld with that. Hello? Ah. Jeez. Ah. Things are loose. Ouch! And this thing is hot. Okay. Well, the thing is that it seems like the, uh, uh, the two batteries... Ah. This is hot. I can't hold it anymore. <laughs> Two batteries is enough to weld, and the reason is the higher voltage. The current capability of the batteries is still the same. The thing is that now the voltage is higher, and why do we need a higher voltage, actually? We need to create an arc. The benefit of an arc is resistance. If we short, like for example, at low voltage, we have to bring this very close to the metal we are welding. And if we touch them, it's a dead short, so the voltage is very small, and power is equal to voltage times current. So if the voltage is zero, but I draw 500 amps, the power is zero, right? I need some resistance there to increase the voltage. When the voltage increases, voltage times current is not zero, it's some amount, and power means heat. And that's what I need. Ouch! Uh, this clamp got my skin now. <laughs> okay. How many things can go wrong? Let's use four batteries now. What's going on here? I connect that there. Now let's check the voltage again. I have four of them in series. Again, the voltages add up. So it's 50 volt, 50.2 volts. Well, does it hurt? Doesn't hurt. 50 volt, still not enough. The current is very limited still by my skin. But something I should tell you, if this 50 volt was AC, I would never touch it. It would probably throw me across the room. AC is different. I'll talk about that later. So that's that. And can it weld? Two batteries was enough. Don't, don't look directly. Ow! Well, again, these things get hot. This is not a proper way to hold the electrode, apparently. Let's do furthest possible. Why did I buy these things? Okay, don't look dark. This is getting annoying now. Ouch. Okay. Ready? Ah. Are you guys there? Yeah, it's too bright. Yeah. You should always wear your goggles. Ten batteries. Just move on to ten batteries now. Okay. How much voltage do we have now? Ten times twelve volts, right? It's hundred twenty three volts, hundred twenty three point three volts. Now, this DC voltage is effectively equivalent to the wall power. So I have this lamp here for you. This is a 150 watt lamp. And I'll plug it in so you can see. So this is a 150 watt. What I'm trying to do is that I'm going to connect that somehow to that battery and I'm gonna turn it on. How do I do that? 
arm. Ow. Don't short your batteries. How many times do I have to tell you? Doesn't matter. I'll get through this, don't worry. I'll just take this out. Okay. Um. Okay. Ready? Let's see if the bulb turns on. See? 120 volts. It's electronics, it's not me. <laughs> so it's effectively exactly the same voltage as the 120 volt power plug. Like, over the same resistance, it provides the same power. Now, do you think I should touch this? Ah, finally, some answer. But I'm going to touch it. So, oh, it actually has something. I felt it. It's not too bad. Well, I expected it to just kill me, but it didn't. Which is good. It's always a positive. Yeah, I can feel it a little bit. Nice. Not awful. <laughs> but the thing is that if this was AC voltage, it would just kill me, right? Okay. Never mess with AC. You can mess with DC a little bit. It doesn't feel anymore. But actually, is it possible that I degraded the battery when I shorted first time? No, nope, it's good. Okay. So, there you go. It's not hurting. It's a DC voltage at 120 volts, which is the same power output as the AC. But it doesn't hurt. Can it weld? Should I try that? <laughs> Fine, anything for you. Ready? <laughs> if you want to move out of the room, this is your chance. Ouch! Zapped me. So, it still hurts, so never try this at home. Okay, ready? Don't look at it directly. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Should we try it again? It was, it was too fun. I want to try it. Don't look directly. Beautiful. I've never done that before. Good thing I'm alive. Look at that. It's all red and beautiful. So it can weld but it might be too much power. Okay, now conclusion. Well, first welding. To weld, being able to provide much current is not enough. You need enough voltage too to create an arc. And the arc is the resistance you need to uh, have enough voltage. So voltage times current equals to power. And that creates heat that does the melting for you. Two batteries is okay for welding. It's a little bit hard. The arc can't get too large, but two and more you can weld. AC versus DC. AC hurts much more. That's what I learned from the people who are leaving comments on my videos. 120 volt is hardly felt over scale. Again, it depends on the skin condition and when like, different parts of body can have different resistances, so you can feel it more if you put it on different spots. And the AC hurts more, and the reason is because of the capacitive property of the body. The body is not only a resistance, it's also a capacitor. And a capacitor, what it does is that it blocks DC, but it allows AC to go through, right? So when there is an AC signal, there is much more current going through, and that will hurt. Current versus voltage. Well, a lot of people say that it's the current that kills, but the fact is that you cannot have current without voltage, right? Yes, it's the current that goes through your body and makes the damage. The voltage is the energy that is needed to move the electrons, right? So the voltage creates the current. Let's say they work hand in hand to hurt and kill. That's why you see signs, danger, high voltage. You don't see danger, high current. Like if there is a thousand amps of current in running through one cable, you touch it, you don't get hurt because the voltage might be one volt. And that's not enough to create enough current through your body. And if the high voltage is across your body, it can't be limited. Some people say that, hey, the voltage may be 10,000 volts, but if it's limited to one microamp, it doesn't hurt you. It, that doesn't even make sense. Your body has a certain resistance with some certain voltage, you will have some certain current. 
and the electrostatic discharge, like when you touch your doorknob, there can be 100, like 10 kilovolts, 20 kilovolts, and those sparks are very high voltage. And people say, hey, yes, it doesn't kill you because the current is limited. That's not true. The current is not limited. The current is actually a lot. It's, it might be 100 milliamps. That's enough to kill a person. But it doesn't hurt because the pulse time is limited. It's like one microsecond or smaller. So you need that time, the extra time to hurt. It will hurt if it's longer. Some people say, hey, birds sit on like wires that can be 100 kilovolts and they don't get hurt. The reason for that is that the circuit is open, so there is no current going through it. The entire voltage on the body of the bird is equal to the wire it's sitting on, and the voltage across the body of the bird is actually zero. But if it actually spread its leg across two's wire, two wires, it will be vaporized easily. And that's my unibra. <laughs> that was my presentation. If you have any questions, I'm, I'll take them. Are you going for any record how much voltage you can stand versus pain? Yeah, I tried that in one of my videos. I uh, didn't go for high voltage. What I did was that I just put the low voltage over my tongue. The tongue has a much smaller resistance, right? So what happens is that f with lower voltage, you can create higher current and hurt yourself. And the current only goes through your tongue, so it doesn't actually kill you, which is a good thing. So what I did was that I put a DC source, and then next I put an AC source and just increase the voltages and see which one hurts more. And I was able to go up to 12 volts with DC over my tongue. People have different pain thresholds. I don't encourage you to check yours. <laughs> but yeah, I, and for AC, I was able to go to six, six and a half volts. So AC hurts at much lower voltage. Can you do it one more time? <laughs> which one? <laughs> Is it okay to make a lot of smoke again? Uh, uh, no, I think we might actually step back on that one. We don't want to set off the alarm. <laughs> Pardon? Yeah. Sorry about that. We got to thank you for sacrificing yourself up here for us. That was wonderful. Thank <laughs> yeah, you very thank much, you. Maddie.